This is part nine of our learning how to code in Delphi series. And we're going to be looking at a different way that we can actually do our input and our output using some special features in Delphi called an input box and a show message. So first of all, what are these things? Let's just take another scenario. Let's say we've got this little program. It's a very simple little program. It's got an edit box called EDT info. And there is a button called BTN display and there's a label called LBL display. Okay, very simple program. And all we're going to do is, for example, we're going to do input. So we're going to take the, the name, we're going to have a name variable, a string, and we're going to get the value of whatever name they put into that edit box, edt info.txt, and store it in S name. Very simple input. And then we just want to display something in the label. And so the output, there's no need to calculate anything. The output is simply change the display's caption to say hello with a space followed by whatever is in the S name variable. So basically when you type in your name in the edit uh, control and click on the button, it'll say hello with whatever name it is there. Very simple little program, nothing major. Now, there is a way that we can make this program work without an edit box and without the label. We can have this program work with just the button. So how do we do that? Well, let's look at this example. So first of all, we're going to look at what's called so we know, as I said, we're not going to use the S name into the edit box. We're not going to need that anymore. We're going to use what's called an input box. Now, this is a special function in Delphi. And it's, as we said before, our functions, if there are multiple uh, pieces of information or what we call parameters, you separate them by commas. So the values we actually give the function are called arguments. So we're going to give arguments, three arguments, to this input box and all three arguments are strings so we need three strings that this box input box function needs now what do those strings do well we'll talk about it now so let's let's pretend those strings are like a for the first one and let's make b for the second one and make c for the third one just so we can see what it looks like so we basically call the input box with three strings separated by the commas obviously so what is it going to look like when i run this well it's going to look something like this. This box will appear on the screen. Something will pop up. So let's have a look at what that means. So first of all, do you notice the first string, the A string? There, it, it goes to the top of the box, whatever the little box at the top, little heading. So whatever we put in the first string will go to the top of it. And then whatever we put in the second string will go to in front of the edit control. And whatever we put in the third uh, string will go to inside the edit control that's inside this input box. So this will just pop up and that's what it will look like. Now this is what it will look like if we run it in Delphi 10.4. Okay, so you're running Delphi version 10.4, it'll look like this. If for some reason you're running Delphi 2010, it's exactly the same, it all works the same. The only difference is you'll notice that the B string, this the, the second string, doesn't go next to the edit control. It actually sits on top of it. So that's the only slight difference between Delphi 10.4 and 2010 in this scenario. Okay, so we're not too worried about that at all. Otherwise, it all works pretty much the same. Okay, so there's great. So, but what's important to me is what's inside the edit control because that's what the user is going to change. So that C, wherever we put the or the third string there, that last string over there, whatever is in there, it doesn't matter what we have it when we call the input box, but whatever the user types into that edit box is then going to be returned. In other words, whatever they type in there, they could change that C to whatever they want and that value will be returned. In other words, it would be sent back once the input box has been, if you click on the OK button. Now, where does this been sent back to? Well, we want to store it somewhere. We want to keep track of what they typed in that edit control. or well, not edit control, but edit little part of the input box. And that is going to be of type string. So we need to store it in some sort of string. Um, and just like we did with our the part of the code that we, we cancelled out there, the S name equals edit. We want to store it in S name. That would be a good place to store it. So we're going to say, hey, S name is assigned the value of the input box. So you don't just call the input box by itself. You've got to say a variable equals or is assigned the value of the input box because a value will be returned and we want to store that value, which will be a particular string. Okay, so just remember that. 
Now, so that because of this, we don't actually need the edit control anymore because this box will pop up when this line of code is executed. And once we click OK, the rest of the, the code will then be executed. So it waits until this part has been completed and then it will continue with the rest of the code. Now, obviously, I don't like that A, B, C, so we can give it our own value. So let's pretend we give it the first string as name, the second string as enter name, and we want to leave whatever's in the edit control or edit part of the input box as a blank. So I put single quote, single quote, just to say that I put nothing in there. Let them type in what they want. What does this look like? Well, it looks something like this. So there you can see the name at the top, enter name. And then they can type in their name and click OK. That looks a little bit better now. That looks more functional for our program. So that's how you can get information from the user, getting input without actually using an edit control or edit box. Now, as we said, in this scenario, we had a string. We got a name, which is fine. But what happens if I want to get a number from the user? So let's say we've got our num and we've got an input box where they've got to enter in their age. Now, that's fine. But the problem is this input box is going to return a string. And we are trying to store it into an integer. And as we know, integers and strings, they don't match. It'll look something like this. So there you can see the box that pops up, number, enter age 20. When they click on OK, it's going to try to put that 20 as a string into INAM and then that will be a problem because integers are not strings. So that's a problem, but it's easy. We know that it's returning a string. We just have to convert it from a string to an int or integer. So if we use our string to int like we would have done if we had done this using an edit control, then it works exactly the same. So the input box is basically you can, whatever you had like an EDT um, something, you could raise, replace it with an input box function. Okay, so there we go. So that all works perfectly for us. So that's how we can use an input box. Now, what about if we want to display something? Now, we can look at the output. Now, I don't want to use this label to display the answer. I want the answer just to just pop up in some sort of box as well. I want it to pop up in a box. And for that, we're going to use a procedure called show message. Now, this doesn't return anything. You just call it like it is with brackets open. And the argument is whatever's inside of that bracket must be a string. It only takes one thing. So one string goes inside the brackets. And whatever that is, like let's say it's A, then a box like this will pop up with an OK button. It doesn't take any information, just like display some sort of message. And the project one is obviously the name of your project. So whatever your project is called will be over there. So there we go. That's as simple as it is. So if we wanted to display, for example, there you can see the A is exactly what is displayed there. We want to display, for example, hello plus the variable S name. As long as that whole thing that we are putting in the show message is a string, then it will display whatever's stored in the S name variable after the word hello with a space. So if I typed in Mr. Long into the input box like we did before, then it will say hello, Mr. Long. So there we go. So that's how you use an input box and a show message. Let's go try it out in Delphi. So yeah, I've got the program. If I run it, it's a very simple little program. As we said, it's going to quickly run and it's going to take whatever we type into this edit control and basically display hello with whatever name we give it in the edit control. So yeah, it's going to pop up. So if I type in the words over here, Mr. Long, and click display, it says, hello, Mr. Long. Very simple little program. So how can we do it without using these two controls, we, or these two components? So let's click on the display button. So there you can see the code. So we don't want to use this anymore. We want to get the value from an input box. So I'm typing input box. And then if I open it up, you can see it needs three strings. So the first string we're gonna type in is the word number. That will appear at the top of the box. Then we can type in another one, please enter. Oh no, we don't want the number, we want the name, sorry. So we can say name, please enter your name. That can be our thing. And we can then, that's the second string. So there, that will go at the top. This will go next to the edit box, inside the input box, and then this will be what's inside it. Now most of the time you want the user to type something in, so we can just leave it blank, quote, quote. But sometimes you might want to leave a default value in there maybe so that it makes your life easier. So there we go. That's the input box. But it's going to return an answer and we need to store it somewhere. Well, we want to store it in S name. So S name is equal to whatever's in the input box. And if this is a string and that's a string, it matches. So therefore we are fine with how that will work. 
So if we run it now, we're still using the label to display our details. But let's see, if I type in Mr. Long, you'll see that it's not going to run that first code. It's going to, okay, first of all, I don't actually need to put anything into that edit box because I'm not using it. I'm just going to click on display. Look, at there's nothing there. Click on display. The box pops up. Name, please enter your name. I type in Mr. Long and click OK. And there it says, hello, Mr. Long. You see, I didn't even need the edit box because we didn't use it. And then with this one, we don't want to display using it. So we are going to use a show message. Show message. And in brackets, it just needs one string. So I'm going to type in the string hello with a space, followed by whatever's in the S name variable. So there we go. So let's run that. Again, we don't need the edit box. So I can leave that blank. Display here. And we can say Mr. Long. Click OK, and then a box pops up saying, hello, Mr. Long. So there we go. So that's how you can replace your inputs. If you want a box to pop up, you can use the input box to get the value, and then a show message if you display whatever you want. Just a reminder, if you were using a number, so let's say we had an iNum variable of type integer. Let's say this iNum of type integer. And we were also going to use the input box, like just like it is there. I'm going to copy that and paste it. Um, then this is a problem because you're trying to put an input box into an integer. So if this was a, let's say we want to gauge, please enter your age. Um, that's a problem. So you would have to first convert it from a string to an int. And then it would work. So you first get your string from the input box. Then that string will be converted from a string to int. Then it goes into inum. And the same over here. If you want to display inum, you would say hello plus... Um, if you want to put that number into the show message, you would have to convert it back from an integer to a string in order to display it in a show message. So there we go. That's input boxes and show messages. For other ways on how you can use Delphi, learning other videos as well as computer literacy for CAT, go to our YouTube channel, click on that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long Way.